Hello everyone, I'm Paris Fox and I'd like to welcome you to 12 O'Clock High, a podcast on business leadership with Tom Fox hosted by Richard Lummis. What makes a great leader? Is it genetic or can you learn leadership skills? Join Tom Fox and Richard Lummis in this podcast where they consider leadership from a wide variety of perspectives, academic, behavioral science, history, popular culture, the movies, and much more. You'll learn about specific tactics and strategies that you can bring to your own leadership toolkit. 12 O'Clock High is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. Richard Lummis is on assignment this week, and so I thought I would look at an interesting topic on the elements of good judgment for a business leader, a compliance professional, or other business executive. It's a fascinating exploration of a great topic. One of the key components for any successful business leader, yet one rarely discussed, is judgment. I was therefore intrigued by a Harvard Business Review article on the topic entitled, The Elements of Good Judgment, How to Improve Your Decision Making. I thought this piece was an excellent way to look at some leadership issues we rarely talk about. The concept is relatively straightforward. As a leader moves towards the embracing of data and incorporation of data, business processes, and other efficiencies, they have to move away from legal structures that they may have used. Most of us have heard, been told, or believe that you should always listen to your gut, and the gut instinct is something you either have or you do not have. A lot of ink has been spilled in the effort to understand what makes good judgment or what good judgment consists of. Some experts define it as an acquired instinct or gut feeling that somehow combines deep experience with analytical skills at an unconscious level to provide insight or recognize a pattern that others often overlook. At this high level, this definition makes intuitive sense, but it is hard to move from understanding what judgment is to knowing how to acquire it or even recognize it. In considering this topic, there is no clear framework to think through what creates good judgment. One thing that decidedly does not create good judgment is past performance. Obviously, prior performance is usually a good indicator of good judgment going forward, but there may be many other things in play. The author noted that multi-generational success of some German mid-sized companies and sheer longevity of Warren Buffett's investment performance are frequently cited examples. But success can have other parents. Luck, the characteristic that Napoleon famously required of his generals, is often an unacknowledged architect of success. Those in sports can uh, vouch for the importance of luck as well as skill, who successfully navigated and designed four America's Cup yachting victories has acknowledged the help of luck in the form of mistakes made by his competitors. It all starts with listening and more important, good listening. Listeners to this podcast series will recognize that as a key trait for any business leader. Yet perhaps even more significant is that leaders with good judgment tend to be good listeners and readers, able to hear what others actually mean, and thus able to see patterns that others do not. They have a breadth of experience and relationships that enable them to recognize parallels or analogies that other miss, or something, or they don't know something, they'll know someone who does and lean on that person's judgment. They can recognize their own emotions and biases and take them out of the equation. They're adept at expanding the array of choices under consideration. <clears throat> the author identified six key elements of good judgment. They are learning, trust, experience, detachment, options, and delivery. Number one, learning. Nothing is more important for the leader than to be a lifelong learner. This is true uh, as uh, business is evolving quickly and now at the speed of light in the era of COVID-19. Active listening, including picking up on what's not said and interpreting body language, is a valuable skill to be honed, and plenty of advice exists. Be aware of your own filters and your defensiveness or aggression that may discourage alternative arguments. Moreover, if you find yourself overwhelmed by written briefing materials, focus on the parts that discuss questions and issues rather than the summary of presentations you'll hear at the meeting. Finally, look for gaps or discrepancies in what's being said or written. Two, trust. Leadership shouldn't be a solitary endeavor. Leaders can draw on the skills of others as well as their own when they approach a decision. Who these advisors are and how much trust the leader places them are critical to the quality of the leader's judgment. And 
his ability to hear what other people actually mean and thus see patterns others do not. The problem is a lack of diversity. One can consider largely white and largely male board of directors of U.S. public companies, but that's only one example. You need to have people around who have different perspectives and are willing to speak up and share them. As a leader, to improve, you have to cultivate sources of trusted advice. People will tell you what you need to know rather than what you want to hear. Obviously, President Trump does not share that view. Experience. Beyond the data and evidence pertinent to a decision, leaders bring their own experience to bear when making judgment calls. Experience gives context and helps us identify potential solutions and anticipated challenges. If you have previously encountered something like a current challenge, leaders can scope out areas in which to focus their energy and resources. The problem is that if a leader has some knowledge or familiarity, they believe such knowledge gives them a deeper insight than is warranted. To improve in this area, you should assess how well you draw on your own experience to make a decision. And from there, expand your experience. Try to get postings in other areas of the company or even abroad. Number four, detachment. Removing emotion in an equation is both a forte and bane of many leaders. Detachment and judgment is a critical element necessary to navigate through many business opportunities. Chief executives often see passion as a positive, but when it leads to bias or blind spots, serious trouble can follow. Witness HP Chief Executive Leo Apakathur and his dogged pursuit of autonomy, even after red flags were raised, and his own leadership team predicted the merger would be an unmitigated disaster for HP. Also consider the numerous CEOs who were taken in by Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos, who but refused to consider any evidence to the contrary. However, it is more than being blinded by passion. As you process information and draw on the diversity of your own and other people's knowledge, it's critical that you understand and address your own biases. Although passion about objectives and value is a wonderful leadership quality that can inspire followers to greater efforts, it can also affect how you process information, learn from experience, and select advisors. The skill to detach, both intellectually and emotionally, is an important part of good judgment, but it can be a hard skill to learn. As research in behavioral economics, psychology, and decision sciences has shown, cognitive biases such as anchoring confirmation and risk aversion are pervasive influences to people. Moreover, a leader must be able to take in and actually listen to different viewpoints. Number five, options. Leaders always need options, and they should never be boxed in. But the key is that a leader should require more options than they are presented. This means a leader must challenge advisors and bring additional options beyond those that may be presented initially. In the financial crisis where senior advisors pushed options, including nationalization of the bank, to Barack Obama, All options were discussed and debated, but the leader must consider not only the collateral consequences, but more importantly, the unintended and perhaps even unforeseen consequences. Many bad judgment calls are inevitable simply because important options and the risk of unintended consequences were never even considered. This happens for a variety of reasons, including risk aversion on the part of person supplying answers. That's why thoroughly exploring the solution is a key to a leader's exercise of judgment. It's not a CEO's job to come up with all the options, but they can ensure the management team delivers a full range of possibilities, counteracting fears and biases that cause the team to self-edit. Six, delivery. Delivery is the same as execution. Jay Martin, former CCO at Baker Hughes, has always maintained it's about execution. When reviewing projects, smart leaders think carefully about the risk of implementation and press for clarification from a project's advocates. This is important for small decisions as well as big ones. This means you need to consider risk management as a leader with good judgment, anticipate risks after a course has been determined and knows by whom those risks are best managed. To improve in execution, the author advises the leader should take or ask his leadership team to consider how examples they posit around execution are relevant to the situation being considered. Get advocates to question their assumptions by engaging in pre-mortem discussions in which the participants try to surface what might cause a potential proposal to fall, and then do this as a part of a project evaluation process. The need for leaders to cultivate good judgment is becoming greater and greater. In the era of COVID-19, with uh, changes literally uh, going exponentially faster, and of course, with social media amplifying every decision, every mistake, every misstep, uh, leaders need to be able to exercise good judgment. This is one consequence of the increase in data and data 
politics available. But you must never forget the human element in good judgment. And I hope you will utilize the steps laid out in this podcast to think about how you can improve your own. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox again. I hope you enjoyed this episode of 12 O'Clock High, a podcast on business leadership. Also, check out the uh, article that the podcast is uh, uh, based upon in the show notes. Please join us again for our next episode where uh, Richard Lummis and I will take another look at leadership. 12 O'Clock High, a podcast on business leadership, is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio.